Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this video is for Behavioral Science Statistics, and in it, we're looking at the fourth online quiz for Chapter 10 on the analysis of variance. The first question on this quiz is, when calculating probability values for, anal uh, excuse me, for the analysis of variance, the correct distribution is the T distribution, the F distribution, the standard normal distribution, or the P distribution? The answer is the F distribution. Now, let me talk about the others. The T distribution is for when you're doing a T test. For instance, the one sample T test, the two sample T, or the repeated measures T, among others. Um, and that's not what we're using here. The standard normal distribution we use for the Z test, uh, but not here. And the P distribution, there is no P distribution that I'm aware of. Uh, you get P values or probability values by looking at where a person falls within or a score falls within its test distribution, but that's there's I'm not aware of any such distribution on its own. Now the F distribution, technically speaking, is a family of distributions, and it depends on two separate degrees of freedom. The first one has to do with how many categories there are, and the second one has to do with how many people there are, also taking into consideration the number of categories. Um, it's a it's it's asymmetrical because it starts at zero and it goes up. It's based on variance. It only has positive values. And here are a few different versions of what the F distribution can look like depending on the combination of degrees of freedom. All right, number two, when is it appropriate to conduct post hoc tests? And A, whenever an ANOVA is statistically significant, B, whenever an ANOVA is not statistically significant, C, whenever eta squared is greater than one, or D, whenever the data are normally distributed. The answer is A, whenever the analysis of variance is statistically significant. The idea here is a post hoc test, which means after the fact, is designed to find where the significant differences are between the group means. So obviously you only want to do it if there are significant differences to look for, which is what you get from the F test. By the way, uh, it, it is also common to refer to the F test that you do first as the omnibus or you know the overall F test and then the post hoc tests. Um, you wouldn't do it if they were not statistically significant because then there'd be really nothing to look for. Uh, whether eta squared is greater than one. Now, eta squared is a measure of effect size. And the F test and the post hoc are inferential tests. And those can be very different because there's a, there's a major influence of sample size on the inferential test that's not there for the, uh, the effect size. And then wh whenever the data are normally distributed, you know, that's, that's just a whole other thing. Anyhow, here's the idea. We got, uh, we've got we seen this one several times. We've got four populations, north, south, east, and west, and you would probably get a statistically significant F test out of this one if you had enough people. And then you would need to do the follow-up post hoc test to find out, for instance, that north was low, east was a little bit high, and the south and west were identical to each other. Number three, what effects are shown in this chart, the one on the right? And we have uh, choices of factor A being significant or not, B significant or not, and the A-B interaction significant or not. Well, this one, the answer is C. And the reason for that, let's make this a little bit bigger, is because there's no main effect for A or B. So A is given by the colors. That's factor A. And if you take the two blue bars and average them, you get six. And if you take the two red bars and average them, you also get six. And so they're, they even out on that factor. Uh, factor B is given by left and right. And the two bars on the left, if you average them, you get six. And the two bars on the right, if you average them, you get six. And so, again, that's a wash. So there's no main effect for factor A or for factor B because they don't make differences by themselves. However, there's a huge difference when you look at the interaction, because you can see, for instance, that it goes down for the first two and up for the second two. This is also called a crossover effect, and it's a very common thing in experimental research, but that is a statistically significant interaction of factors A and B without having any main effects for A and B, and it's actually not that uncommon. Number four, what effects are shown in this chart? And we've got the same choices of uh, main effects for A or B or a significant interaction. Well, in this case, what we have is a main effect for B, but no main effect for A and no interaction. Again, the reason for this is that you see, if you take the uh, factor A is given by the color of the bars, the two blue bars average out to six, the two red bars average out to six, and that's a wash. So there's no difference on factor A. 
The two bars on the left, which are the first category in factor one, are have an average of eight, and the two uh, on the right have an average of four. So there's a big difference uh, for the two categories or levels in factor B. On the other hand, you see that the, there's no switch in the, in the interaction. So this is just an interaction on factor B. Okay, our last one. Imagine a study that compared men and women, that's the gender factor, and I apologize for the typos in this question, who were socially liberal or conservative, that's the social attitudes factor, on levels of empathy. If the difference between men and women was different for people who were socially liberal or conservative, and I know that sounds really weird, but it is an accurate statement, then this result would be called a, a significant main effect, and a significant interaction effect, a significant manipulation effect, or a spurious effect. Well, in this case, it's an interaction effect. And the thing that we're looking at is what we saw just from a moment ago in one of our other slides. And this is where the difference between, for instance, the blue bar and the red bar is different depending on whether you're on the left or the right. So again, the difference between uh, groups is different for one factor and another. That's an interaction. And this is a crossover. This is one kind of interaction that comes up a lot. Anyhow, that's it for chapter 10. Hope that's helpful and good luck on the on the exam.